Ladies, gentlemen, and dark crusaders of all ages, as time goes on, players are getting farther and farther into Lords of the Fallen and experiencing all that it has to offer. But as with any of these kind of games, there are tons of bits of gear, armor, weapons, or spells that you can easily miss along your journey, and some of them are a pretty big deal if you do get to have them. So in order to help alleviate the stress of being unsure if you missed something behind that corner, today we're going to talk about another 12 items of various kinds that might well fit into your build for the game, but could absolutely be missed. As for which section of the game this is covering, I would label this as the late mid game, but as the game gets further in, you get a bit more choice as to when you go where for a little bit. So keep in mind that while I will do my best to do this in a sort of game progression order as normal, some of these levels simply start when you choose to start them, so it doesn't quite work that simply. Without further ado then, let's bash on in here and start off first with the Bow of the Convert. And this thing is quite special. See agility scaling and only agility based requirements, but what makes this thing special is that it has physical damage mainly, but then a split of every other normal damage type, so you are never really hurt too bad by anything's resistances. Then on top of that, it is also just 80 bleed buildup, 80 burn buildup, and 80 poison buildup, all of which being put together makes for a really nasty combo, and 80 buildup is definitely a decent amount of it to have too. To get this one for yourself then, from the vestige of Lydia the Numb Witch, you want to head back the way that you came to here from the first place, left out of the door, across the bridge, enter the Umbral Realm, and cross this bridge as well, climb up to the roof again, and then in this tiny fenced off area on a corpse is where you'll find the bow. Second today is Adir's Authority, an Inferno spell. This is just a fun little tool, an AoE knockback in a relatively small radius, not massive damage, definitely more for the knockback than anything, but it's a really fun one for sure. As for getting this one, you want to go from the Vestige of Hooded and Thule, and then go backwards into the last level. Head up the wooden spiral staircase that is behind the Vestige, and then back into the larger building with the fireplace, go upstairs in the main room, and then right across from the open door is a bookshelf where you can find this spell for yourself. Third up is going to be the Nahuta Effigy, which is the best Umbral Catalyst in the game. Great base damage, pretty solid scaling, three spell slots, really just does a fantastic job of winding up the strongest thing that you can have as an Umbral Caster in this slot. To get it for yourself then, from the Cistern area where you are in the big open flooded tower, you want to head down the large spiral staircase on your left, and then you'll find the entrance to a sewer. You want to enter the Umbral Realm here specifically, and then take a left, followed by another left, in which you will find a fleshy loot box in front of you that you can pop open to find this catalyst. Fourth today, then, is the Justice Grand Sword. Just a big, beautiful blade for those wanting to wield one. C plus strength scaling, E radiant scaling, decent splits of physical and holy damage, but most importantly, this thing has 200 smite on it. And smite is a status when it builds up, pops off a nice chunk of damage, then makes the enemy take more damage from your attacks for a short period afterwards. So this is a really strong debuff to be able to build around properly. In order to get this one for yourself then, you will have needed to reach the Revelation Depths area that you find through the Cistern area, and to take this quick path you'll need to have found the second elevator shortcut through the level. The two elevators link up nicely, one of them goes directly to the Vestige of Katarin, and then there is another one that is right beside that elevator that goes down quite a far distance as well. At the bottom end of this one, if you climb up a couple of ladders and then backtrack just a bit, you'll find a platform I'm sure a fair few players decided to just not deal with because of the enemy is located on it, but just up this tiny ladder here is where you can find and grab the Justice Sword for yourself. Fifth up then, we have Diminishing Missile, an Umbral Spell. This fires out a homing projectile that makes your enemy take more damage and also deal less damage. Obviously, just as it sounds, this is quite powerful, so I of course wanted to make sure any of you Umbral Sorcerers out there got your hands on this one. To get it for yourself, you need to reach the Path of Devotion area. This is done by getting the Pilgrim's Purge key, either through purchasing it early from Captain Stomond in Skyrest Bridge, or just from progressing the story. Once you have the key, go to the Vestige of Blind Agatha and then open the nearby door from there using the key. Once inside, simply progress the area until you eventually reach the Path of Devotion and the Vestige of Deater in that outer area. From this vestige, simply head across the path here to the bottom of the hill, enter the Umbral Realm, and Soulflay the fleshy loot box in front of you to find this spell for yourself. Sixth then is the Cursed Armor Set. This is a really neat looking heavy armor set with some pretty significant damage mitigation and resistances too. It's very strong if you have the weight limit to actually wear it, and it just looks quite nice, so you probably don't don't want to miss it. To get this one, progress through the Belled Rise area until you reach the Mance of the Hallowed Brothers and the Vestige of Ferrers the Chard. From here, as you progress, you will get a shortcut through the gate in front of you here, and you will open the Umbral Eye Flower that blocks the way forward across the bridge. From here, simply continue forwards and then up the stairs in front until you reach this lovely fleshy loot box in the Umbral Realm, and of course, inside of this is the Armor Set. Seventh today is a bit of a combo piece. The Ebonlight Abiding Defender Sword is a really nice meaty grab. 
grand sword. We all love a good big sword. And it has C minus scaling in strength and radiance. The damage of the hits themselves is split pretty evenly between physical and wither, with the wither damage actually scaling with your radiance stat. On top of that, it also has 125 bleed status buildup, which is quite decent, and then also 125 frost status buildup, which is great to have, especially as a combo with the bleed. Essentially, this is like an alternate option to the bloody glory sword that has wither and frost buildup instead. It's a very cool weapon for sure. To get it for yourself then, still in that Mance of the Hallowed Brothers area, eventually as you progress through the level, you will find your way into this sort of open courtyard area. If you follow it around to the right and head up the stairway, and then take a left back into the building, you'll find a flower bed that you may well want to put a seed down in, because back out of that door and across the little bridge is actually an optional boss fight, and the reward for that boss fight is this sword. But also on top of that, you can also get a radiant spell from defeating this boss, which is called Divine Arms, popping some holy weapons into the ground and then raking them towards your targets. There's also a flail in the chest that's behind the boss, so make sure you open that up afterwards as well. Eighth up, we have the Melted Dark Crusader Sword. This is a bit of a crazier weapon in that it has D plus scaling with every main damage scaling stat in the game. Strength, Agility, Radiance, Inferno, all four of them. And its actual damage is split between physical and wither. The strange scaling of this weapon means that it technically has an extremely high damage cap because of the mixed scaling, but it also means that it will take a lot of effort to actually get it to be that strong. Regardless of anything, it looks really cool, and I'm sure that is enough that some people would want to use it, even regardless of anything else. To get this one for yourself then, this is in the upper Calrath level, past the cistern. As you progress through the level, you will find this big open circle that looks like a boss room, but actually isn't, and not long afterwards, you'll open this gate here from the other side. Once through this gate, just head on through the smaller building that is ahead of you with the tight winding corridors inside, go past the Iron Wayfarer inside, and then take a right, enter the Umbral Realm, so that you can cross this little gap here in front of you, and get through the wall that is here as well. Then just continue into the next area to find yourself a nice fleshy loot box to open up, which is tucked in under an archway, and inside of this, of course, will be the weapon that you seek. Ninth then is going to be the Putrid Child Sword, which is quite the name. This is a tri-scaling sword, E strength, D plus radiance, D plus inferno, intended to be more of an umbral style weapon, of course. The base damage is split between physical and wither, and it also has a nice 60 frost status buildup as well. This one also looks quite cool, like it's covered in frozen eyes, which is absolutely quite the unique aesthetic, if nothing else. To get this for yourself, you will need to progress to the Thief of the Chill Curse level, where all the ice stuff is happening, all the snow enemies, everything like that. Keep going into this level until you eventually reach a sort of flooded, frozen village. If you enter the Umbral Realm, you can traverse under where the water normally is, and in the sort of center square of this town, there is a big statue with a fleshy loot box sitting in front of it that will drop this sword for you when you soul play it. Tenth up then, we have the Talon Fist Weapons, and these are quite neat. D minus strength scaling, C plus agility scaling, which isn't bad at all, full physical damage on the actual damage types of the hits, and then 60 frost status build up too, which is pretty dang good for something that attacks as frequently as this does. To get them for yourself from that same frozen village area, as you progress through the area, you will unlock a ladder shortcut right over here. From there, you can drop down into this building that I'm standing in, and if you continue along the floating debris path from here and turn around on the roof at the end of it, you can find this weapon waiting on a corpse for you to pick up. Number 11 today is going to be the Jadeal set. Who knows how to pronounce that correctly? Definitely not this guy right here. That's me. This armor then is just a funky little bone armor set with a monkey type Neanderthal skull helmet. It's very cool. And just a really heavy bone and fur motif throughout the whole thing. It looks quite nice and definitely is unique to most of the other armor sets in the game. The defenses on it are quite good, and for the most part, this counts as a medium armor set, except for the chest, which is instead heavy armor. If you want to get this one for yourself, continuing through that flooded village area once more, from the same shortcut ladder that we talked about in the last entry, but from the top of the ladder this time, head forwards and progress through the level, crossing back through the open building and into a sort of courtyard area. Then as you come up the stairs here, you will see a chest. Inside of that chest, you will find this full armor set waiting for you. Then finally, our 12th item of the day is the Kin Ranger Leader's Axe. This axe scales D plus equally with both strength and agility, which is a pretty solid start for a mixed stat weapon. The damage is purely physical on the attacks themselves, but it also has a nice 80 frost buildup to it too if you want to apply that to your enemies, as well as just having a nice rustic look to it as an axe in general. If you want this axe yourself, simply continue progressing the frosty ice zone then until you hit the remembrance boss of the area. After you defeat the boss, instead of turning around, go on to the next room immediately afterwards, and then you can find the axe next to the emergency effigy. And that does it for today then everyone, another 12 bits of gear and spells to make sure that you grab in the late mid-game section of Lords of the Fallen, all of which you want to make sure that you don't miss. I hope you've enjoyed this collection of items, and I hope having one or more of these items in your inventory makes you enjoy the rest of the game even more. Like if you liked the video, subscribe
subscribe to the notification bell for more. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye